Welcome, church. Um, it's good to see some of you braving the weather today, <laughs> and the rest of you that will be joining us on um, online today later on. Um, thank you for coming. Um, so today, um, usually it's our third Sunday of the month that we do Mission Sunday, and we highlight that. But I wasn't here last week, so I asked if we could wait and do our missions in review for this year, just tell you kind of all the things that have happened, all the partners that we have partnered with, and um, it's pretty exciting to see what God has done in the midst of a pandemic. Um, so to start off, um, we've met our faith promise for this year for all of our partners Yay. that we said that we were committing, committing um, so much money to this year. Um, so thank you very much, church. Um, for uh, um, your ties and your promises that you've given throughout the year. Um, so these are the partners that we've partnered with financially for this year. So they were um, International Ch um, Child Care Ministries, mainly focusing on India, so Stand for Children. And um, so far this year, they've um, had 6,000 children that have been trained this year on how to avoid being trafficked in their country. Um, and then Empowering Lives International, mainly we were um, focused on men of change um, in East Africa. 
but due to the pandemic, um, some of those programs haven't been able to go on. So what they did is they raised money for a seed project. And so they were able to resource 40 villages in Kenya and Congo with seeds that they could plant for crops and also emergency supplies that went to them. And then our third global, reaching globally, is Dennis and Kyle Leon in Costa Rica. And there, because they were shut down, they wanted to come up with something that they could reach their community with. And so what they did is they had a chicken project. And so they gave out more than 2,000 baby chickens to their communities so that people could raise them either for food or also to sell them and buy more chickens. So that's what they did this year. So locally impacting. So here's how we've impacted locally with our finances year this year. So these are our partners that we've given money to. So Rebirth Homes, um, and that's where they take, um, take in women who've been human trafficked and they um, help them kind of get back on their feet. They have mentoring programs. They, have, um, they also teach them about who their creator is and that they're beautiful in his sight. Um, so we also helped um, Rebirth Homes by collecting many items that the women needed and delivered them to the home. Um, we also, they also benefited from milk and food for many months um, that we supplied from Hope Food Pantry in Lake Elsinore. We also helped Operation Safe House, which is um, for at-risk teens um, in Riverside where they can come and um, get help and get training on how to get back with their families. Um, actually, we had some homeless teens that showed up on site that we were able to refer to Operation Safe House this year. And then also our third partner was Path of Life, and this is where they have three homeless shelters. Um, and most of this year, those shelters were full. Um, so it's been a busy year. <laughs> for all of these groups. They've continued to um, do what God's called them to do. They've been very essential during this time. So there's also some ways that we as a church have partnered with some other organizations in Riverside this year. So Angel Tree, which we do every Christmas, we had 25 families that were given Christmas gifts. Um, all of Crest Boys Homes, we've supplied them with milk and food for months from Hope Food Pantry. And then part, um, part of the boys would come for our men's breakfast times throughout the year when we could meet. Faith in Motion, which supplies resources for foster children. February, we did suitcases, teddy bears, and bedding, and we filled more than a bin and a half full of stuff for them. In June, we gave gift cards for gradua graduating seniors in foster care, and in December, we did gift cards for a Christmas party for kids who were being aged out of the system and transitioning somewhere else. We've al also given them a mattress, boys' bikes, and also board games. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot that this church has done this year. Um, at the beginning of the year, I was saying I wanted us to get more involved in serving. And because of COVID, the serving part <laughs> wasn't able to happen but instead, we have resourced these ministries quite a lot. Also, Care Portal, which we just joined up with, is connecting churches with the needs of families in crisis. So we've been able to give um, gift cards for groceries, a desk, and money for a motel stay. Um, Love Riverside this year was different, uh, October 10th. Um, so what we did is we did, household, we did a household items collection and those were given to the Path of Life to help um, set up families who are transitioning into housing after being homeless. Um, we had a huge bin um, overflowing of stuff that we took on October 10th to donate. And then we've had the Riverside Food Distribution um, happen on December 4th on our church property. And we were one of the sites for the city for this free uh, food distribution. Alongside that, we've also been, um, been able to bless many of our church families through the Good Sam Fund with grocery gift cards. 
And we've had a number of homeless actually end up on our um, property this year, and we've been able to give them some clothes and emergency kits throughout the year. So thank you, church, for being the hands and feet of Jesus for our community during this very hard year of 2020. So let's continue to worship now um, um, with this beautiful um, choir. Choir. Yeah, it's, a, it's a kind of a choir. Um, <laughs> let's continue to worship today in your name.
us your peace, your joy, and your hope. Lord, that we would continue to see you at work, oh God. Lord, may we celebrate your birth and the work that you are doing in us, Lord. God, we thank you for all the ways that we've had the opportunity to love on our community and our world, to love you by loving others, by making an impact. God, we pray that we would just continue to do that, that with the same love and compassion and generosity that you've shown us, Lord, that we would just share that love with others, oh God. Lord, we just pray that we would continue to draw close to you this year and in the new year, oh Lord. So we praise you and we love you, Jesus, in your precious name. so wonderful to see all of you. I know it's cold, but you're here. So thankful for that. We have one last um, gift card to give away, and we see a lot of Christmas sweaters still out there, but I want to give this to somebody way in the back who came. Bonnie, I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to come up. I'll come all the way back there. All right. All right. Thank you all for being here. I'm Pastor Joe. If you're online, welcome. If you're here, welcome. I'm so glad you all are here. Uh, yes, I, I got a new jacket because I am celebrating still Christmas. You may be everywhere else. People stop celebrating Christmas. We're going to continue celebrating Christmas at least till this Sunday. So um, I am on, right? All right, cool. Sounds good. All right. Hey, so glad you're here. Uh, this is the last Sunday of the year of 2020, right? We made it. Can you believe that? We are totally almost done with this stinking year, right? I don't know how else to describe this year other than it's been uh, an anomaly, right? There's been these political issues. There's been social issues. There has been a freaking pandemic issue that has caused us all to, to really disrupt our normalcy of life, of freedom, of independence, of dependency. You know, things that we depended on at one time are no longer there, right? And the things that we were independent of, we need now to depend on of. So it's this really strange and uh, weird time that we live in. And it almost makes you think that we have to begin to live in a place where we're interdependent where we depend on one another because of our gifts and trades and our and abilities and disabilities that we have. And it's amazing to see how God is just wonderfully working these things out. Now listen, yay, yay to God. We made our financial commitment to our missions. That is one of the greatest things that we could ever have done. Have we made our budget? No, we didn't make our budget this year. But, but we made our you know, our, our missions, which means that we are doing and making an impact locally and reaching globally. You know, that we love God, love others. That is the most amazing thing, that we continue to carry out our mission with our money and our actions. Not only did you go above and beyond by giving, you went above and beyond by actually presenting yourself, serving in places like the distribution, coming and dropping off food and clothes, and searching and trying to find help for others, giving to the Good Sam Fund. All of those things have really brought us to a place where we're actually beginning to serve our community and our world as God has called us. So that is something that should cause us joy, right? Because today we're going to talk about joy. And joy is really about a cause of joy, of gladness. That there, like joy in the biblical sense, that joy is not dependent or surrounded around our emotions. It is not surrounded of whether I feel happy about today or about tomorrow. It's not around circumstances. It's about a cause for joy. And when you hear this, that joy came into the world, it's that God brought us a joy that will last forever. That it, it is a, it's not depending on how you feel today or tomorrow about God. God don't care if you're mad at him today or tomorrow. He still gave joy. 
and you gave us to enjoy this joy and to rejoice. Today we get to rejoice in the fact that we are a part of a community, a congregation, a part of a, of a community out here on the California and Adams Street to be a part of. We've seen teenagers this year. We had to send them to safe Operation Safe House. Why? Because they came looking and they were hurting. They were distraught. I sat with a boy this year whose family kicked him out. He was living here at the church property. He was sleeping behind the staircase. And we talked to him and we found him hope. We don't know where he's at today, but all we know is that we were able to connect him to a place that can bring hope and salvation. And that's the greatest part. And that is a cause for joy. We rejoice in the Lord today because he's been doing great and wonderful things. We cannot stop. Joy does not depend on the pandemic, whether it ends today or tomorrow, whether we get a vaccination today or tomorrow, whether we get a stimulus check today or tomorrow. Joy does not depend on those things. It is outside of circumstance. It is what God gives. And in Luke chapter 2, it is the Christmas story. I want to read it for you for a moment. I want to look at what it says, these good news I bring to you. So let's read out of Luke chapter 2. Gracias por estar con nosotros. I forget that we have to do it in Spanish too. Es un bendición que estás con nosotros. Ya mero se termina 2020, el año que es, ay, muy feo, pero grande es el Señor porque nos espera otro año, ¿verdad? Amén. Vamos a mirar a Lucas capítulo 2, versículo 1 a 16. We're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 16. It says, in those days... Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place since Cornelius, the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be, uh, to who he was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son, a, a firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and he will be assigned to you, and he will find a baby wrapped in in cloths, in, and laying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, in, on earth peace to those whom his, rest, whom his favor rests on. And, the, and when the angels left them, they had, gone into, they had gone into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing, that, every, that has happened to which the Lord has told us about. And I love this. The angel shows up, and they're frightened, right? What we know about angels is that they were coming to earth to tell us the good news. And that not that they were scary. They were just different. And uh, I have friends who actually see angels, which is really amazing. I wish I would be able to see one because I want to see how they are. But they talk about angels being these big uh, creatures, these these things that they see, and it's amazing. And some of them, they, you get terrified just because it's different. It's not like a human. But anyways, they show up to the shepherds, which tell me the angels are real. So here's the thing: we see the angels are real, but we also see that they come and they say, "Hey, I have we have come to bring you good news that will what cause joy." Did you see that? It said that it will cause joy, good news that causes joy. See, the thing is that we forget that God's gospel is a cause for joy in our lives. That salvation itself is a cause for joy. So 
There are the circumstances that we see in life may not cause us joy or happiness, but here's the thing, that in our lives, God is a cause for joy. That our relationship to God is a cause for joy. And I love this, that because it's, not, it's a gladness, it's like, wow, this is amazing. Why? Because Jesus came to bring healing, salvation, reconciliation. He came to bring, to be a bridge between us and God and us and humanity, between one another, so that husbands and wives can live in unity, a two and become one, so that we as human relationships can actually be friends and BFFs and all these things to get through uh, our difficulties in life together. When we get in a fight or there's a conflict, there's reconciliation, not retaliation. When there's an enemy in life, there's prayer to pray for, not this revenge thing right when things don't work out our way there's a dependency on god who can overcome the enemy right so we see this that god is a cause for joy in god and what i love about christmas is that we often forget that it's no let's see you might have opened your gifts this week kids or, or parents and you may have gotten what you wanted or you didn't get what you wanted and it may have caused joy or no joy right you would have been happy or unhappy about what you've gotten but here's the thing See, God didn't come to Christmas or gave us a Christmas or a birth of Christ so that we can have Christmas gifts. The greatest Christmas gift that we have is God, our Savior. That is who the greatest gift that we have. The other gift is not what's under the tree. It's those who surround the tree with you. Right? Those relationships between you and your family. And this year... It was different because not everybody was able to come to your house or you go to their house. But the people around you in that moment is the people who God wanted you to be with and to enjoy, to create joy, to remind you that there is joy in relationship. And so when the Bible talks about joy, it doesn't talk about our surrounding circumstances, whether they're good or not. It doesn't talk about the good emotions that we feel, but it is around who God is and what he does for us. See, the thing is, God didn't have to send his son, but he did. God didn't have to allow Jesus to die and resurrect for our sins so that we can have salvation, but he did. And so when we talk about joy, joy is and only can come from God. Now, I can create emotions of happiness in you i can make you feel happy you know you can make me feel happy you can feel me feel accepted or unwanted but see joy is not that way it's a spiritual thing and we see that throughout the bible that joy is not about how happy you feel in the moment as a matter of fact when you go through the bible it says rejoice in the lord always philippians 4 right pray in all circumstances whether you're feeling anxious or not. And so we see these ideas, the, 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 even the, the gospel writers are telling us to rejoice in the Lord. Even throughout Psalms, Paul or David talks about, you know, having joy in the Lord. Or even his joy being restored in the Lord. And see, we see that joy is a foundational part of our spiritual lives. It's not just something that's created to make us feel good about today, about tomorrow. It makes us have a gladness in the circumstances that we face in life. And I love this. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is already to be revealed in the last times. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuous, genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined 
and though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I love this. There's an inexpressible and glorious joy in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, even though we have not seen him. See, joy is not based on circumstances or emotion. It is based on our foundation of faith in God. And so it is not set by our emotions or belief, but it's the belief that we have in Jesus that creates this joy, inexpressible and glorious joy. So let me ask you this. Where is your joy today? Did you lose it? Where did you leave it? Have you ever experienced joy or just mere emotions of happiness? See, we can experience all these things, emotions of happiness, sadness, but joy comes even in the midst of bad circumstances, even in the midst of bad news, in the midst of losing a job. And that's why he says, even though you have had to suffer briefly grief and suffered in First Peter, it talks about that you still have an inexpressible and glorious joy in God through Christ Jesus. What I love is that the other part is that nothing or no one can take your joy. In John chapter 16, when Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's reminding them of the one to come, but he's also talking about the grief that they'll experience because he will leave. And so Jesus says this, so with you, now is your time of grief, but you will see again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. I love those words of Jesus that he says that no one will take away your joy. You know, when you read through Romans, it says, you know, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, not nakedness, not famine, not demons, not heaven or hell or anything. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so in the same way, the grief or, or, or circumstances cannot separate us from the joy that we have in the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord. See, when the angels came and spoke to those lowly shepherds, they received the news with great joy or gladness. They received what they was said that, yes, a Savior has been born. And they were excited. And not only that, but a choir showed up. <laughs> and they began to sing. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know, just maybe, when joy hits us, maybe it's a cause for a song. See, for some of us, music creates emotions of happiness or connectedness and even sometimes grief. But somehow we see through the biblical accounts that whenever there's joy or, have, or when there's these experiences of joy with God, that the angels show up and a choir sings. And it's amazing. So just maybe worship or what we call worship today, those three songs before the message and the one song after the message, maybe those are moments where we can experience joy with God. See, maybe, maybe our definition of worship needs to begin to change a little bit here and there. Because what we've done over the years is that we've boxed in worship into just a time of music. But see, these shepherds weren't around hanging around the, the choir. They weren't hanging around the pastor or the preacher. They weren't even at church. They were out in the field. Somewhere out there, in the midst of poop, right? Because these sheep just uncontrollably go wherever they want. And it probably smells. 
and they're probably bored out of their minds because it's late at night. And then all of a sudden, they hear the good news, and right then and there, joy hit them. And they began to break out in song. It's amazing. So I love this. I love that no one can take your joy. It is a promise of Jesus that we can trust. And it's a promise that we'll continue to hang on to. And I pray that you do too. Galatians chapter 5. It says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Joy is a spiritual fruit. In Espanol, it says, En cambio, la clase de fruta, fruto que es el Espíritu Santo produce en nosotros vida, es amor, alegría, paz, paciencia, gentileza, bondad, felicidad, humildad, control propio. No existen leyes contra estas cosas. I love that, that God reminds us that joy is a spiritual fruit. It's a product of our connectedness to Him. When we talk about walking and living in the Spirit, that we see these fruits exhibit love, peace, joy, kindness. But joy is actual spiritual fruit in our lives. It comes from our connectedness to God. So when you're not connected to God, what you do experience is happiness for a moment that lasts for a moment until the next moment that you're happy with someone or something, right? When gifts you get, for the moment when you get it, you're really excited and happy. But then eventually the happiness wears out and you have to find something else to create that happiness. And, and we do that in relationships. We do that with things, with cars. We do that with jobs. We, we do that with school. We do that with all kinds of things that we, we get into. And, and we let our circumstances, and it's not a spiritual fruit or byproduct of us being connected to God. So you get this fruit by filling your life with God. And where do you get these God from? It, you, you search the scriptures. God speaks to us through the scriptures. God speaks to us through his word, right? He speaks to us through fellowship, through gathering together. And I know that the circumstances of us gathering is different because we're, we have to be six feet apart or, or we don't meet as often. But when you do meet, and this is what I love, over the, the last few years that we've been here, we've created, or at least we've been in, in what I call triads, where it's three, three or less people, and you connect, and, and you have fellowship, you have prayer, you have accountability, you, you have words of encouragement, you have speaking truth to one another. And that is in itself breaking of bread and and. and, and and it's, it's also a form of discipleship and growing. And there's where you get filled with the Holy Spirit more of. Not just in a, a Bible study, not just in this large gathering, not just online, but it's when you meet together. Fellowship creates joy in the midst of heartache because you know that you go to people that you trust and love and they help you. Prayer. Prayer is another way that we connect to God. It's not God, give me this. It's God, I don't know what to pray for anymore. But I need your words. And I know I need you. And when you fall into that place of kind of attitude of prayer, then you might be met with joy. <laughs> because then you, God will remind you that you are loved, that you are worth it the good news comes and creates gladness in you. And I love this. I'm going to end with this last verse. But it doesn't matter, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, it is, ca it, it is a moment where you can find joy. And in James chapter 1, it says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And it goes on to saying character. And if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives so generously. 
Here's the thing. That joy does not weigh in our circumstances. That when you face, no what matter what you face, we're going to face 2021 with great joy, with pure joy. <laughs> right? Because you know what? We, we, we're grieved. We've gone grieved all year long, okay? We've grieved the gatherings of one another, the, our family traditions of Thanksgiving, Christmas, even Easter was affected this year. You know what? Our Halloween celebration that we do for our community was affected this year. But it did not keep us from reaching our community. It did not keep us from interacting with families in our community. It did not keep us from doing any of the things that God has called us to do. So we will not let our un, un, uh, unstable circumstances in this life and in this upcoming year to rob us of the joy that we have in the Lord. So this year, as we approach it, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. What are we going to do? Rejoice in the Lord. You know what? When things go bad, what are we going to do? Rejoice in the Lord. When our jobs come back, what are we going to do? Rejoice in the Lord. When we lose our checks, what are we going to do? Rejoice in the Lord. What are we going to do when the pandemic continues? Rejoice in the Lord. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus even higher and brighter and louder and greater because there is not anything that's going to rob us of the joy that we have in God. Amen? So this is that year. We're going to let God lead us into it, but we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Amen? I don't know about you, but I'm ready to rejoice. I'm done with this whole thing. I'm done not hanging out with my friends or drinking coffee at my favorite spots or any of those things. I'm done. But I'm ready to rejoice in the Lord because I do believe when we rejoice, our circumstances change so much more because there is gladness that only God can fill in our lives. But yet we've been so dependent on happiness in our emotions to lead our joy. And we're not going to do that. We're going to depend on our relationship and our faith foundation in God to lead us in joy this year. You know what? We're going to march around our Jericho seven times and let the walls fall down. You know what? We're going to believe and trust in God this year that the pandemic or, or this virus finds a cure. That God will brilliantly drop those, those scientists or whomever doctors that need the knowledge to be able to do this. And we're going to rejoice in the Lord when it happens. We're going to thank God for that person or companies or whomever they are. But we're going to tie it back to God because God is our circumstance. He leads every one of those with great joy. This is that year. We're going to be lit with joy. Amen? Because that's what we need. The worship team is going to come up and lead us in this song. And I want us to rejoice. Today is that day. The Son of God has been born. <laughs> he has given us good news to rejoice in. And we're going to rejoice in the Lord today. Amen? Amen. I love you all. I know it's been tough, but God is our joy and nobody else. God is our joy. Amen? Amen.
right. Praise God. Amen. Let us rejoice in the Lord. Here's the blessing before you go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Espanol. Les pido a Dios, le pido a Dios, fuente de esperanza, que los llene completamente de alegría y paz para, confían, para que confíen en Él. Entonces robarán en una esperanza segura mediante el poder del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Amén. Just a reminder, uh, sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. We're going to be moving, um, we're not going to be streaming, or sorry, we're not going to be meeting live <laughs> next week, just for the month of January as the weather gets colder. And we're hoping to come back in February where at least it gets a little bit uh, uh, warmer as we get closer to the spring. But yes, it's going to get much colder, maybe rainier, so rainy, and it's unpredictable with the weather here. Um, especially when it's trying to rain. So we're going to meet, uh, we're going to start meeting again outdoors starting in February. But next week, tune in live because we'll be streaming it live either Facebook or YouTube. So we're glad you're here and uh, glad you've been here with us. All right. God bless you and we'll see you next week.